the past couple decades, as small drones have proliferated the battlefield and become more advanced and more capable to attack U.S. outposts and other types of installations, all areas of DoD have been looking at how to counter that drone problem. One such effort that's seen some success in testing is from the Air Force Research Laboratory, known as THOR. That project is the Tactical High-Powered Operational Responder. Essentially, it's a, a larger system run by two operators that can be delivered in a 20-foot shipping container on a C-130 that can drop into a base, be it a FOB or otherwise, as long as it has a power supply, and knock down drones at great distances and multiple drone swarms at once. Now, while THOR has actually shown good testing in different types of environments for the scientists, and also out in certain field operations and testing scenarios, it hasn't, of course, been deployed yet. First, they have to build a prototype. To do that, the Air Force has selected Laidos and given them a $25 million prototyping contract. Now, Laidos doesn't have a lot of time to create this prototype. They have to have it delivered by next year, 2023. Now, keeping with the Norse mythology comic book superhero Thor, the follow-on prototype is going to be called Mjolnir. And if you know your comic book and Norse mythology, Mjolnir is the name of the hammer that Thor throws to defeat his enemies. This Mjolnir, however, won't be a cool little accessory that we can all model. It's actually going to be an invisible laser that's silent and moves at the speed of light. And the Air Force is going after a laser solution for a lot of reasons. Right now, small arms fire really isn't that effective in taking out drones, and even if it does, it's only at short distances. Also, larger caliber weapons, uh, be it artillery or missile systems, are quite expensive to shoot, especially when there's multiple drones coming at once, and that munition can only hit one target. So what Thor, or Mjolnir, will do is essentially give a concentrated burst of high microwave energy that will knock out electronic systems at long distances. So you don't have to wait till those drones come up on the border or the edge or the fencing of your installation. You can knock them out maybe before you even see them with a the naked eye. Time and speed of deployment are of the essence, especially when firing the system. Well, first off, though, to set it up, it takes about three hours for two airmen or two soldiers to set this up after offloading it from a C-130 transport plane. So it can be pretty mobile and go just about anywhere in the world. Now actually for firing, the system can charge and fire after identifying a target in about a second under testing. The way the Air Force Research Laboratory coins it, it's basically a speed of light solution to go after these counter drone types of effects that is always silently watching, always protecting, quickly detecting, and effectively destroying. This isn't an Air Force only effort. This also involves Army's Rapid Capability and Critical Technologies Office and the Joint Counter UAS Office, bringing together all the different DoD aspects and learning how this system might be able to help other service branches protect their installations. And now while Thoreau's Mjolnir is a great solution for protecting bases, it doesn't necessarily solve all solutions, all problems for counter drone work, such as in squad level or on a ship perhaps. But there are other solutions out there pending the DoD is working multiple programs across multiple offices and services. And while fielding won't be immediate, with the prototype delivery in 2023, something could be coming around the corner quite soon. For Military Times, this is Todd South.